okay and anybody can download it and this antenna is particularly designed for ieee 802.11 aw lan now here you can correlate it i shown you one particular slide that why the protocols are important why the ranges are important what type of application important so here you can correlate my previous slides with this thing okay now another factor that i not touched upon to this particular topic that is called as the sar sar means specific absorption rate okay uh, while looking into the time table of this particular fdp i seen that uh, respected professor dr ss patnaik sir will touch upon to the biomedical effects and sir will definitely talk on to the sar so i will not uh talk on to the sir i will concentrate on some another aspects okay every antenna designer has to take care try to minimize the copper area because see you have to interface you have to place your antenna on to the human body it is a integral part of human body so we have to, to take that there should be the minimum deposition of the electromagnetic signals into the human body or the muscles or the tissues that part we have to take care sar sar means what specific absorption rate how much the smooth tissues or smooth muscles of the human body is absorbing the radio frequency signals or the electromagnetic signals that we have to minimize now see here you, now you are um, uh, in the challenge position that you have to reduce the metal part right and you have to increase the bandwidth also and you have to increase the gain also see now what is the situation the situation is that one side you are reducing metal portion and one side you are saying that sir we want a higher gain for higher gain we want more metal area if i will go for more metal area then my sar will be more okay more deposition will take place so we have to find out some win win position win win position means you have to considerably reduce the metal portion of the radiating patch and you have to considerably have the higher gain so that's why if you will see the geometry in the geometry it is basically a rectangular microstrip patch antenna i have <clears throat> made two slots two slots here i have made okay and in one slot square type of slot one srr that is called as the split ring resonator we will talk on to that uh, so split ring resonator is placed into that particular gap and it is giving me a better impedance matching as well as i am increasing the metal area so the gain is also going to increase okay so this is the radiating patch and figure b shows photograph b shows the ground plane at the ground plane see if you will see the sma connector is connected okay so some small hole is there into that that particular connection of your vector network analyzer because next part is your testing and experimentation of the antenna that's why the antenna has to be connected it has to be interfaced with the vector network analyzer so that's why the pin of the that is called as the n type of connector we are using so through n type of connector the vector network analyzer or site analyzer is connected to the sma connector and at the front side you see that there is a radiating patch so from the input side the connector is getting the input and from the top side if you will see on the right corner the soldered point is shown okay so the antenna that is called as the fed it is fed by coaxial line coaxial fed and it is soldered that's why i told you that sma connection is a big challenge for antenna designers so proper soldering should be there and there, there should not be i think dr balwinder sir might be agree with me that we have tested one of the antenna of his mtech student mtech student of dr balwinder singh that there is a some air gap between the ground plane and the sma connector so see that ground plane and sma connector there is a formation of capacitance right and that capacitance is changing my frequency actually because basically antenna is a lc circuit so unnecessarily if you are adding one capacitance means your frequency is shifted so ultimately what we have done we have used all the soldering material to the four sides of the sma connector 
and then the capacitance is minimized because air is acting as a dielectric material. So these minute things we have to take in account while designing this antenna. Now come to this part. If you will see the green type, the green type is your wearable substrate. Here polyester I have used. Okay, what are the dimensions that we will see? So this is the actual geometry. First of all, go for designing of the geometry by using, see here, mathematical modeling. I have used the length uh, of the rectangular microstrip patch antenna. That is C upon FR into under root of epsilon E, dielectric constant. Okay, so substrate used is the polyester of the thickness, 1 mm. Okay, here you can use the, what you can say, your screw gauge or by vernier caliper, you can measure the thickness because that is available into our institution or into the industry or in mechanical department of our institutes, it is available or in our lab, you can make it available. So measure the thickness, okay? Then copper tape I have used, you have seen into the particular photographs and the antenna is fed at the location of X is equal to 11 mm and Y is equal to 7 mm. Okay, always for ground plane, some equation is there. 6H plus L and 6W plus 6H plus W. So these formulas we have to follow for uh, designing the ground plane. Okay, if you are going for finite ground plane, if your ground plane is fixed, okay, whatever it may be the size of the patch, if your ground plane is of the same size, then you may face the problem of backlog. So if you don't want the backlog, then try to avoid the part of finite ground plane. But if the situation demands, then you have to some follow some compromising techniques. Okay, so this is the geometry of the antenna. See, these are the measured results. Actually, this particular rectangular microstrip patch antenna, it is resonating at 8.97 gigahertz. See the simulated results. Here I have used IE3D simulator. Okay, the antenna is resonating approximately at 9 gigahertz. That is 8.97 gigahertz. Okay, so when I have made the cut into that and when I place the metameter splittering over there, then the antenna is resonating at 5.1 gigahertz something with the 5.10 gigahertz with the bandwidth of 97 megahertz. Okay, so these are my simulated results, right? So if their simulated results are in good agreement, then go for the fabrication. Okay. Now, this is the testing of the antenna. If you will see on the top, there is a bird site analyzer. In our Chandigarh laboratory, we have a bird site analyzer up to 6 gigahertz. So, this is the antenna is connected. See here, some well, you may see one red color type of uh, cello tape. Okay. From that side, the SMA connector is getting the input from your vector network analyzer and the radiating patch is from our side and the antenna is radiating. And here I am getting the measured result. If you will see the cursor one, okay? So these are my measured results, okay? The measured result is at 5.34 gigahertz and here the same antenna is tested into the anechoic chamber, okay? So these are the specifications. So that specifications of the network analyzer or site analyzer that we have to mention into our research paper because it may always matters. You might have seen the number of research papers into that. So this is S11. That is called as when I am applying input to port one, what amount of energy is reflected back? That's why this is called as a return loss or reflection coefficient. Okay, that's why I'm, I told you two, three slides before that if some signal is reflected back, okay, then the antenna is not radiated. Okay, so it is holding the signal. It is neither sending it back to the network analyzer or nor radiating into the air. So it is holding the signal. In that case, we say that the substrate is lossy. So we have to take care while connecting the SMA connector that the substrate should not be lossy. The connection should not be lossy. Okay, otherwise, that is our practical experience is that in some of the cases, the an antenna acts as a filter. It is not acting as an antenna. It is just removing some particular range of the frequency and it is transmitting some range of frequencies. We also don't want that because filter design is another area. Okay, in that case, we don't want radiation. But in antenna, we want the radiation at that particular frequency. That particular care has to be taken. 
then these are the radiation patterns here considerable amount of gain we got that is 4.95 gigahertz so in some of the cases uh, you have to get give it into the research papers okay another parameter here we measured that is called as the bending effect so in 2009 we implemented this method okay still the peoples are using these methods or you can have another also in the simulators nowadays the simulators are also quite capable to have that particular curvature type of shapes into which you can put the antenna and you can find out the bending effect here i use the pvc pipe the pvc pipe is cut into two parts and prepare the shape like a thigh or a shape of a shoulder onto which the antenna is placed and the bending effect has been measured see this is the antenna that is placed onto the pvc pipe on the back side there is a vector network analyzer and the same results i am getting onto the pc and i, I have stored it okay so you can also get some data points that data points can also be used by using some optimization techniques so that is a different area so balvinder sir may talk on to this optimization techniques in tomorrow or day after tomorrow in his session so these are the bending effects results into different different curved shapes okay so these are the measured results actually and we don't found any considerable de more deviations into the results and what are the practical applications so these are the on body positioning of the antennas okay on to the cap the antenna is placed or on to the shoulder the antenna is placed okay so what are the features of this antenna these are the small size antenna like inexpensive simple fabrication techniques and very negligible bending effect we determined due to the slotting yes that also advantage you can enjoy here by slotting you are removing the metal portion you are removing means the bending effect is also going to reduce and low electromagnetic deposition into the user's body because of removing the metal portion okay so another second antenna i am going to discuss that is what is called as the dual band microstrip patch antenna and this work it has been presented into indian antenna week okay actually that is a workshop and always workshop uh, works or functions on to the hardware part so that's why we have presented our work into this ieee indian antenna week Uh, you might be knowing that the papers are also available into the IEEE Explorer, and it has been awarded uh, by uh, PTU authorities and Chandigarh director and other authorities also there, and some antenna stalwarts, okay, like R K Mishra sir and all these. So, what are the objectives for this work? The objectives are here: we use some polyester substrate, and now it is a dual band antenna. one for fcc that is called as public safety band 4.94 gigahertz to 4.99 gigahertz and i triple 802.11 wlan 5 gigahertz applications okay here polyester substrate we have used okay and another aspect here i use that i want to tell that you think for adding additional components with your microstrip patch antenna what are these particular points these are your inter digital capacitor idc you can use you can use your some shorting pin the shorting pin is acting as a inductor capacitor is giving you some capacitance and you have to use it by using some mathematics so that you can get your desired frequency bands so when i use the inter digital capacitor with the slotted patch i got the dual band operation that is the public safety band and wlan band applications with the proper bandwidth as well as some metal portion is also reduced so i want to show you the geometry to you people see this is the design of the proposed antenna here two rectangular slot has been created and this is the idc inter digital capacitor see in the simulator these components are readily available in research paper their design equations are also given just i have connected one inter digital capacitor over there okay now you can here you can modify this geometry you can go for number of digital capacitors from four sides you what you just check the effects you verify the results so these are there and inter digital capacitor gives you some particular value of the capacitance 
okay so if you will see at the bottom side the radiating patch and the ground plane so there is a sma connector through which the antenna is fed on the front side the radiating patch the capacitance is connected to the slotted rectangular microstrip patch antenna it is fed at x is equal to minus 11 mm so this the parameters you will also get into the research papers because i have to come cover uh, more antennas so that's why i will not touch upon this by each and every value okay here i want to give you some concepts that how you you can develop your geometries how you you will be a progressive in making the different different geometries okay so finger length and finger width that are the calculated values here now what is the novelty of this design so here the substrate is the polyester substrate that i have used here bending effect is reduced by reducing the metal part and electromagnetic deposition is reduced and flexible design see the flexibility you have to provide i can now change the number of fingers of the idc you increase the number of fingers of the interdigital capacitor you see the effects you decrease the number of fingers even you change the length and width of the each and every finger and you verify the results okay and that flexibility you will get into design always your design should have the proper flexibility and you should be able to write the physics of that particular antenna now see these are the simulated results i told you that this is a dual band antenna two resonant frequencies are there 5.6 gigahertz and 10 gigahertz okay when i connected the interdigital capacitor i got a considerable good results that res uh, one resonant frequency which is fra is now fr1 it is reduced to 4.94 gigahertz bandwidth uh, sorry gigahertz frequency with the bandwidth of 100 megahertz it is applicable for public safety band second is 5.53 gigahertz bandwidth of 313 megahertz and it is applicable for wlan applications okay now we have to test this so that there now there are two frequencies fr1 and fr2 now this antenna is tested before that the radiation pattern that we have to understand here the gain is 6.60 we have to check it into azimuth as well as elevation at both the frequencies okay ha huh. now the point comes in my sequence of presentation i discussed that uh, we will talk something on equivalent circuit analysis because the what is the contribution of the designer what is the contribution of the antenna researcher or antenna engineer that what the geometry you have used you have to validate its result by putting some equivalent circuit analysis so here if you will see the two slots they are shown by r1 x1 it gives you me, me the impedance of z1 r2 x2 it gives me the impedance of z2 and the interdigital capacitor it gives you the idc and two capacitors cp1 and cp2 they are the pad capacitors and this rlc is my rectangular microstrip patch antenna uh, equivalent circuit so when i have developed this i took uh, approximately one and half month or two months to develop the equivalent circuit of this okay and uh, i have calculated the values of the capacitor as well as the inductors whatsoever it may be involved into that and here you have to use the microstrip line equations to calculate the values of interdigital capacitors and the pad capacitors okay so it is there it is also there into my research papers that are available into the google or a particular website now if you will see as you will connect the interdigital capacitor the direction of the current goes on changing and your performance becomes very attractive and the antenna is suitable okay now see now these are the measured results fr1 it is 100 megahertz public safety band for 4.84 see the frequency values are shifted why shifted that we have to discuss into the next slides and second frequency band is 5.30 gigahertz it is wlan frequency application so these are the measured results we have measured it into our laboratory and the instrument used is bird sight analyzer that i have used okay now you have observed the shifting into the resonant frequency now this shifting is occurred because when i stitch the particular substrate the threads and the stitches they becomes corrugated they developed some corrugations into the substrate 
if you will see i have shown one diagram where the substrate is open okay on the top there is a radiating patch and at the bottom there are corrugations okay so in this corrugation some air part may be there actually we expect that the epsilon r should be of the substrate material only but here the epsilon r added it is of the air substrate okay air material and it forms one particular capacitor and that is called as the c substrate c sub its equation is epsilon 0 epsilon r effective h into w by l okay so i have calculated that capacitance so c substrate i have shown it now this c substrate capacitance gets added into my equivalent circuit and the frequency is shifted so we have to be careful that the stitches should be very close to each other so that the air should not be interfered into that so this is the observation because we got this deviation so one or one fine morning patnaik sir told me joshi just find out this what is the effect of these corrugations so i searched the ieee papers i got some references and through which i discussed with sir that sir sir this may be the problem so sir has accepted yes this may be the reason so you calculate the values we will go on we will go ahead and we got some values and the values are shifted so this is the work that we have enhanced and we have modified okay so these are the different achievements we measured its weight okay so basically antenna is a lc resonant circuit so how you are validating your result see three parameters are important simulated results theoretical results and measured results if these three results are in good agreement and if you have written the physics of that particular antenna in a supportive documentary manner then the paper or the research will will be accepted and you even even though you can also go for some patenting of the work okay so this is there this is the on body positioning and this work has been appreciated by the experts uh, in that particular workshop rk mishra sir and some persons from isro and drdo were there and uh, prof respected professor ramesh garg sir he also appreciated the work and the uh, jury they appreciated the work they asked some of the questions and we replied them uh, so this is what the another antenna another in the month of november and december my one of the research colleague uh, mr mandar joshi he has developed okay uh, the one fine morning he told me sir can we think for foam i told him yes go ahead we will work with this let us see what the results will be there so we work on to that and here we use the hexagonal micro strip patch antenna okay and into that some we want to change the direction of the work so we went for a circular polarization okay so the line is there the projected antenna exhibits right handed circular polarization in some particular application you can use this type of antenna it is nowadays available into the ieee explorer okay so here foam substrate is used okay so that foam it is a high density from foam you can go for another material also so this part is also there so this is the geometry if you will see hexagonal geometry okay and it is designed by using some mathematical equations from the uh, other side there is a radiating patch and there is a ground plane okay and the antenna is fed and here self adhesive copper tape is used for radiating element as well as ground plane okay now if you will see the result the antenna is applicable or useful for 2.45 gigahertz okay so 2.42 gigahertz to 2.49 gigahertz okay very good impedance matching here we got also we check the axial ratio for cross polarization okay here we use the cad fico simulator because that is available into the uh, institution that we have to use and here you will see some notch at the bottom side that shows there is a cp okay so we check the cp we measured the results so another we got the one suggestion from patnaik sir that you vary the length of this particular slot so we vary that and we have observed some parametric analysis by changing the length 7 mm 8 mm and 9 mm and we got some considerable good results in and around to that okay so this is the flow of current surface current distribution at particular angles if you will see the slots nearby the current is flowing 
okay, in a circular fashion. Okay, so this is the axial ratio. Maximum gain 9.14 dBi here we achieved. And this is the actual geometry we fabricated. It is tested and the results are in good agreement. Okay, so the foam, okay, that foam is available in, as a packing material for your electronic goods. So we use that foam because it is a flexible. Okay, so our flexibility criteria is satisfied. It is a wearable, it is a low cost. Okay, that part we have analyzed here. Now we, our further research is going on by making various slots into that particular radiating patch, load it by means of different, different uh, techniques and the measured results are in front of you. So our we have compared our results with the previous published results. So we are having at some good stage. So this is the measured uh, weight of that particular antenna. Okay. Another geotextile, this is the my PhD research work here I am presenting. This is available into the International Journal of Micro and Optical Technology. Here T-shaped microstrip uh, antenna I used. And here some <clears throat> SR splittering resonators are placed at the bottom side. There is a ground plane. At the front side, there is a radiating patch. Now here it is a challenging part for antenna researchers that how to develop the equivalent circuit for this type of structure. Because if you will see number of loadings are there, number of slots are there, number of cuts are there, number of slots are there, number of inductors are there. Okay, so that all the parts you have to take in account for making the equivalent circuit analysis of this. Now this particular antenna is suitable for 4.94 gigahertz to 4.99 gigahertz. Okay, and we proposed it for firefighters and some police vehicles and offshore workers. Okay. So this is the geometry, polypropylene PS. The manufacturer is TechFab India. He has given all the parameters, all the specifications which are desirous for wearable and the flexible antennas. My one of the research colleagues, Sir, he was working at that type into civil engineering work. Okay. And he was using that polypropylene into his research work for drainage and for filtering some sewage and some water. So one fine morning I was sitting with his lab and I asked him, yes, what is this, sir? What is this material? So he told me this is the material and these are the specifications. And yesterday only I received it from Mumbai. So I have seen the parameters are of my interest. So I used it and I developed this antenna and I shown the results to Professor Patnaik sir. He was so glad and he was so appreciating uh, phenomenal that yes, Joshi, this, this type of things are required. So here what I mean to see, he while working into different, different departments with your friends and with your colleagues or while moving into the market, just search for the different materials. I am telling to my different friends also, Yes, if you are in contact with these type materials, then please inform me. I will do what I want. Okay, so this visibility is much more required. So I use this material as a substrate for my antenna. So this is the geometry, size in terms of lambda. So these are the simulated results, 5 gigahertz. Then I reduced it by increasing the number of SRRs and I reduced it to the public safety band of 4.94 gigahertz to 4.99 gigahertz, exact 50 megahertz bandwidth here I got for public safety applications. These are the measured results. Measured results, I am getting it 4.13. Some results are shifted because of uh, connectivity and some manufacturing defects. So here are the practical results I am showing you and what the problems and how I have fabricated that the facts I am sharing all with you. And taking account that your network analyzer is properly calibrated in no load okay in open load short circuit condition that care has to be taken as a part of antenna researcher i want to convey you you might be having the vector network analyzer into your laboratory but as a presenter it's my duty and responsibility that i should convey this message to my participants that always take care of calibration of your vector network analyzer. Sometimes it may require hardware calibration, 
Sometimes it is a software calibrated, but take care of that. Okay, so this is the gain of 6.38 uh, dBi here we got. Okay, now see, this is the equivalent circuit analysis. This is the interesting part. Okay, so this is the T part where LHR and VHR, okay, horizontal rectangular strip and VP means vertical rectangular strip. So they are shown by the inductors. Now every SRR, some of the you people might be working on some metal material concepts or SRR. That basically SRR is a LC circuit. So I have shown every SRR by LC combination and this T-shaped microstrip patch antenna is loaded by means of LC combination, SRR and the port one. See port or the SMA connector, what you are connecting, it also has some equivalent circuit. We have to take it into account also. What is the inductance of that pin? What is the capacitance of that pin? How it is grounded? That we have to take in account. Okay, so this is the equivalent circuit. I have calculated their values uh, on paper and they are mentioned into the research paper and the simulated resonant frequency and theoretical resonant frequency. They are in good agreement as well as practically they are validated. So these are the placements of the antenna for the security personnel and it is the integration uh, of nowadays there is a V2V. Okay, so some people are working on to V2V that is vehicle to vehicle communication or C2C, car to car communication. Okay, so one separate band is declared for that. It is somewhat 5.8 on 5.9 gigahertz. So you, but the requirement is the circular polarization. So that part we have to take in account. Okay, so this is the M band medical body area network application. Okay, that is a variable right angle rectangular microstrip patch antenna. We presented this work at the one national conference on biomedical engineering at Chandigarh Department of Ele Electronics and Communication Engineering. Uh, they have conducted and it is sponsored by Department of Scientific and Industrial Research. Okay, so here we use the flexible foam again. Self adhesive copper tape is used. Okay, this is the geometry of the antenna. Okay, equations. Okay, parametric analysis with slot and without slot. See, always think and always compare your antenna results with other results or you vary your geometry parameters, whichever is possible. That take care has to be taken. Then this is the current distribution. While making the slot, if you will see the current is into the circular manner. Okay, in the first case, it is not following the proper pattern, but in the second case, which slot it is following the proper pattern. Okay, this is the gain 8.2 dBi efficiency. Uh, the researcher has uh, given the comment that the antenna efficiency should be added. That's why we have added this particular part. Okay, so this is the fabricated result, fabricated antenna. The measured results are there. So again, the geometry, we are in the process of enhancement, its uh, structure and the geometry. The photograph is showing the measured results. That part is also there. It is 2.31 measured results. Some deviations are there. Okay, we are trying to cope up with this. Okay, what the material, what the facilities available to us by using this, we are doing and fabricating this. Here, okay, key, key side, we, vector network area network we used. These are the features, weight and gain. Ah, see here, this is another uh, antenna. That is what is the interdigital capacitor. It is loaded with some rectangular stub. Now it is available into the handbook in 2014. Also in applied IEEE AEMC, applied electromagnetics. Uh, okay, uh, some participant is asking for DOI of it. So DOI is in the presentation, it is there. In the references, it is also there. You can refer, no problem. Okay, so see here, in the basic stage, the corrugations are there. Okay, so some results are shifted that we will check. So this antenna is again the dual band, that is 802.11 WLAN and ISM band. This is the geometry, polysor substrate we have used, copper tape is used. Okay, at this, in the circle, if you will see, in the simulated result, we got some deep at minus five reflection coefficient, S11. Okay, and the desired resonant frequency I am getting 2.45, that is not the issue. But we were worried about the second dip, what we observe at minus five. Okay, 
so <clears throat> now see this is the beauty and the beauty means i mean to say the what the factors we have to observe while measuring the antennas okay what the simulator result shows that there is no below minus 10 matching i bot so there is no issue of the second band but after fabrication and some fabrication dissimilarities or modalities i got the good matching at minus 10 if you will see i was not expecting the second that is not the part of my design but after fabricating i got this matching so this type of care has to be taken okay so after measurement after doing everything then go for the finalization so again we calculated the corrugation effects and we got the considerable value of the capacitance developed due to the corrugations stitched okay see the equivalent circuit this is first one is the equivalent circuit of the antenna and capacitance is added into that some inductance part is added and the second resonant frequency by practically we got the matching of this so these are the values here we have to follow the microstrip line equations for calculating the capacitances and the inductances okay so these equations are readily available into the research papers that we can use or you can use the book of respected professor dr ramesh garg and book of microstrip patch antennas or you can use the other books are also there that you can use okay but what i mean to say that always validate your results by equivalent circuit analysis that is the demand of the era so these are the values calculated values gain is up to 5 dbi okay the positioning of this particular antenna on the sport person you can put it and you can do it okay so i have the again modifications into this particular geometry so few minutes uh, dr bai request balvinder sir to give me 5 minutes more so that i can have the discussion so this is the modification again yes 5 gigahertz 50 megahertz 45 megahertz bandwidth good matching here i got gain is up to 6.15 dbi again equivalent circuit analysis okay inductance here we have calculated mutual coupling yes mutual coupling is correct that every uh, participant or every antenna researcher should consider about the mutual inductance because it plays a very important role in antenna designing and parametric analysis okay so we have to calculate the mutual coupling also okay. so this this is the my first antenna that i have fabricated in my phd work okay so if you will see it is a crude type of design after that my designing and fabrication was very much improved and that was presented at iit delhi into this particular workshop where the work has been appreciated by iit people at the delhi section if you will see uh, here the copper tape was not available with me i used the copper sheet what the copper sheet they are using for making the pots and utensils i purchased it from uh, mohali industrial area okay and by using that metal cutter i cut this particular antenna structure it is fabricated and tested okay but the results are very fantastic here i use the idc again see these are the measured results at 5.25 gigahertz and 5.78 gigahertz 13% bandwidth and 2% bandwidth so these are the measured results the measured results very fantastic i got okay so the iit experts from delhi they appreciated this work okay. so this are the two bands here i got okay. if you will see here the calibration that is the full calibration means the vector network analyzer is fully calibrated and after that i have measured the antenna okay very best matching i got minus 35.40 for first resonant frequency and minus 28.9 at the second Uh, resonant frequency okay. so some slots and some dips i got into the radiation pattern but due to the thick copper metal i got the higher gain of 7 dbi considerably higher gain i got okay. so this is the theoretical validation of the antenna uh, these are the how i have calculated the resonant frequency 
by using different micro strip line circuits okay and the antenna is having a same value theoretical value experimental value and calculated value they are in the good agreement so this is the proposed antenna as a buckle of the belt that we proposed at that time okay in 2009 something so here now in this particular slides onwards two three slides i introduced uh, for your kind information and for your reference that into the 2 august 2020 i triple e antennas and propagation magazine into that they have published one helmet antenna and that is for public safety 4.94 gigahertz and they have used the substrate material that is the felt substrate they have used because we know the construction of our helmet inside that there is a felt like a thermocol okay that they have used the dielectric material having the thickness of 3 mm generally okay and electro textile material they have used for making the conductive part of that particular antenna and this is safely integrated into the helmet okay and four patch elements they have used if you will see the four patch elements are there okay and they are at the bottom side inside the helmet the four patch that is the ra basically okay so this antenna is now resonating at 4.94 gigahertz they have used s22 no problem okay and in the first side the red spot you might be showing okay so at the center this antenna is making the more contact with the head okay so they have calculated the sar also they have designed some sar equations also there so sar will touch upon into that particular area so just in for for information i am showing you so you can think for this particular type of designs okay so here through the raspberry pi and usb cables thermal scanner so every information is communicated with that is the rf circuitry augmented reality and that signals are communicated with the antenna this antenna is basically a conformal antenna and through the server they are communicated this is the real prototype so the interested candidates they can download the paper and they go through the paper this is very informative paper what i think so these are the what are the laboratory facilities we need they are the electromagnetic simulators we should have i3d hfss okay then is what the instruments we should have that is the vna then spectrum analyzer power sensor signal generator then rf shielded cable bnc to n and n n to bnc connector sma connector and microwave bench these are the names of some of the simulators here i mentioned then this is the design and fabrication process we have published one of the paper for antenna researches as a case study we conducted one training for antenna uh, interested students for vit that is vellore institute of technology some from ptu so that part we discussed okay so that is published into the format it is free download and available so the flow chart is there uh, sir has advised me that uh, put on this for our participant so start then decide your application or decide your dimensions frequency gain geometry bandwidth then simulate it if you are achieving your specifications then proceed for fabrication and testing and experimental if no then go for simulation go on and finally come to your geometry okay so this is now the conclusion part in this particular presentation i tried to present the different flexible and wearable antennas by using different substrate materials okay what the substrates we used what the antennas we have fabricated at actual the reality i presented here our results are validated by equivalent circuit analysis that analysis also presented into this particular work i have covered the different substrate materials their antennas used for band m band wifi wimax and public safety band applications so i tried to touch upon each and every aspect of this particular antennas but so if not then we will have the discussion into the question and answer 
okay so here i request that the research can develop their mps because it's our antenna community very few people are working into antennas and microwaves that we have to come up with the different different geometries different different substrate materials and validate our results for different bands and for different different applications okay and every participant has to support everybody because very few peoples nowadays you can see some of the peoples are working but when we were working dr balvinder saying me and some peoples were there very few peoples some of the research scholars of uh, respected professor s raghavan sir that is shanmugaanandan sir okay so very few peoples were there nowadays you have very group very good group so you can come up and you can develop the antennas so this i want to mention here and just i want to stop my presentation so these are the references you can use these references or if you want to more references you can mail me my mail is also there at the first slide i will be glad enough to mail you the papers and the information thank you thank you so much thank you sir thank you. okay yes yes yeah, so one question is there sir that i want to highlight uh, which book should be referred to develop equivalent circuits for uh, antennas here i want to suggest one thing that Uh, first one is you use the ramesh garg handbook for micro strip lines and second is that you use the research papers by biloti fibreto biloti he has given the geometries he has given the values of capacitance how to calculate inductance how to calculate that is there so here my honest suggestion is that always refer the research papers rather than the books for the books you can have the clarification but what the recent formula is the researchers have to that my suggestion will be that use i triple e papers or elsewhere paper where papers research papers where the very renowned papers are there very renowned research groups are working and their work is presented into that so you refer those formulas and validate your results okay one thesis one thesis is also there from stanford university mr mohanan so you download that thesis he has given the calculation of values of inductance of different different shapes to that pertaining to planar technology we are very much interested in planar technology as well as micro strip line technology and he is satisfying both of the our conditions so biloti paper you can refer no problem one more point is there uh, please share some insight regarding numerical modeling of the antenna for numerical modeling uh, you have to take the basic uh, structure if you will i will take the rectangular micro strip patch antenna then i have to first of all design that micro strip rectangular antenna by using some standard formulae which are available into the books or into the handbooks or the research paper okay you will get your value let us say i got 5 gigahertz now i want to reduce it so i am making the slots so for the slots which type of slot you are using how to design the dimension of the slots that type of modeling you have to follow okay so this is one more question that is the numerical modeling yes i am referring the chat box only uh one question is there the equation is not correct if you use lr is equal to 15 mm fr is 90 16.96 uh, gigahertz yes how you are feeding that antenna whether you are feeding it into radiating patch side or non radiating side that part you have to consider 
okay so this is the also important factor for uh, rectangular micro strip patch antenna yes to the presenter if you are using negative value of the reflection coefficient do not call it as a return loss yes this is there everybody is calling it as a return loss and reflection coefficient reflection the energy is reflected back means returned back to the source that's why it is called as return loss why the frequency and frequency ratio is reduces when you induced idc yes basically interdigital capacitor it introduces some value of capacitance so what is the resonant frequency of your basic antenna structure into that the capacitance of the idc is added and it is responsible to reduce the resonant frequency some of the participants they want uh, the paper link sir so that will be available into the references ah uh, one question is there sir one question that does every polyester fabric will have same dielectric constant not necessary that you have to measure okay by using some standard reference and research papers are available by using their techniques you can measure the dielectric constant okay one question is there where can we purchase the self adhesive copper tape okay self adhesive copper tape you can purchase it from amazon it will be readily available one of our uh, research group participant mr danveer mandal and we people we purchased it online okay so you can purchase it from online yes uh, conductive spray and copper paint one of the industry i don't know the name it is uh, into my another diary that one company is situated into dombivli in mumbai they are manufacturing the copper paints i purchased copper paint from that company okay you mail me i will give you the name and address of that particular company don't worry on which parameters interdigital capacitor effect it capacitance number of they are called as the finger length so number of fingers and finger length they will affect the capacitor value how we can measure bending effect bending effect is measured by means of shifting in the resonant frequency so you have to measure its the return loss that is the reflection coefficient you have to measure and second factor you have to measure by what amount the frequency is shifted okay what is the dielectric constant of geo textile substrate yes it is readily available okay they will give you the sheet containing the thickness dielectric constant mechanical strength mechanical support and you can use it why un, why m band is called as unlicensed band because you you can use it for your applications you don't have to take the permissions of any authorities like police personnel or police department you can use it into your campus also into your department also that's why this is unlicensed band pad of capacitor means you if you recall the geometry at the both sides of the fingers okay there are some square type of attachment is there that square type of attachment is the pad of that particular capacitor and through the pad we are making either grounding of that idc or we are connecting it to the supply that that part is called as the pad of the capacitor so these are the questions sir that i replied uh, which are available into my chat box thank you sir yes yes sure sir yes sure sure sir
थैंक यू सर थैंक यू थैंक यू सर thank you sir thank you and best luck to all the participants for their research work thank you thank you